What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you guys how I made this scene here. Now, I posted this up on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter, and you guys have been reaching out like crazy, asking me how I came up with this effect using the free plugin Hot 4D with X particles inside of Cinema 4D. So, I'm going to show you guys how I put that together. It's real easy to do, generating vertex maps with Hot 4D. So, let's just jump right into it. What up, what up? We're gonna get started into this tutorial using Hot 4D with X particles. So let's get started. So first, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make a plane. I'm gonna make this plane like 1000 by 1000. And then for segments, um, well, let me apply the Hot 4D plugin first so you guys can see what's gonna happen. So if you don't know what Hot 4D is, um, a developer took, I guess, um, like the ocean plugin from Houdini, convert it to Cinema 4D and give it all for free. So if you just Google Hot 4D, you'll come across the links to download that. So I'm gonna take the Hot 4D plugin, put it underneath my plane. You can already see we're starting to get some ocean waves here. I'm gonna go up to display and I'm gonna use, put lines on here so we can see our polygon count. And so now I'm gonna come back to my plane, make my Width and height segments, let's say 300 by 300. And you can already see our waves are starting to get really defined here. And just a caveat, the higher you go, the slower your machine's gonna run depending on your machine specs. And so now let's get into the Hot 4D um, attributes here. So let me drag this over a little bit. So for my ocean resolution, I'm gonna bring it up to about 512. And if you look in the viewport, you can see a pop up. The waves are a little bit more defined now. And then for my ocean size, I'm gonna leave it at 500. If you make this smaller, you can start seeing that the waves are starting to go in like a repeating pattern. So I found that the default 500 is fine. And then for wind speed, I'm gonna leave that alone. Same with the wind direction. I believe it's gonna go to the upper right, which is fine. For my shortest wave, I'm gonna go, um, well, if I drag this up, you can see it's starting to really smooth the waves out. So I'm gonna go to about, let's say like 1.2, looks fine. And then for my wave height, I don't want it to be this high. I don't want it as choppy, so I'm gonna bring it down a tiny bit. Let's say 20 will probably be good. I'm gonna leave the choppiness on. I'm gonna turn, if I turn up the choppiness too high, the polygons start to overlap and you get like this alien looking wave, which I mean, if you want that style, could be cool, but I'm gonna leave the choppiness down to about 1.1. And then I'm gonna leave the dampness alone, the wind alignment, leave that alone. And I'm gonna leave the ocean depth alone. So now let me go down into my timeline. I'm gonna make this like 1000 frames. I'm just working at the default 30 frames per second. So I'm on my first frame here and under time, I wanna put a keyframe. Then I'm gonna go to my last uh, frame of my timeline here. I'm gonna just drag this up and you can see our waves are starting to animate. So we're gonna to wanna to place another keyframe here at the end. Um, that should be fine there, 106. Let's start at the beginning and hit play. And now you can see our waves are starting to move in motion and it looks like it's going a little bit slow. So let me come back to the end. Let me change this maybe like 125, place a keyframe, hit play. And if you notice too, it's easing into the um, keyframe. I think it starts with an ease on there just by default. And so to get around that, if I come up to my upper right hand here, where it says layout, and I come down to animate, I will bring up my um, timeline here. And if I click on Hot 4D and then come over here to Linear, I'll click on that. And now if I hit play, it's a consistent bit, um, it's a consistent velocity throughout the entire thing. There's no ramp up, no ramp down or anything. You're just gonna get constant waves moving throughout your animation. So I'm gonna come back to my, my startup here like so. All right, so now we're ready to add some vertex maps so that we can get some foam on here. So first I need to come up to my plane and on my keyboard hit C to make this an edible poly. 
And then if I come over to my left hand side under points, I'll click on this and you can see everything flattened out like so, which is good. So now we want to come over to select set vertex weight and I'm going to leave everything at default here, zero and mode set, hit OK. And now you can see on our plane, we get a vertex map here. So if I click on my hot 4D down here, it says um, this is where we can put our vertex maps under J minus map and our foam map. And this is going to control our um, our foam and how we have it admitted and how we have it displayed. So my first vertex map that I made here, I'm just going to name this J minus because that's where I'm going to put it at. So it's going to be J minus vertex map. So now I'm going to click off, make sure I'm clicked off at everything. And I'm going to come up to select and make another vertex map. So I go up to select, come down to set vertex weight. Again, just hit zero. And now we have a second vertex map. And I'm going to just name this one foam. So now it's time to plug these into its respective spots. So if I click back on hot 40, I remember my first map here is my foam map. So I'm going to bring this down to foam map vertex map, put that in there and then take my J minus one and bring this in the hair. So now if I double click, which one is this? My foam one, we can see everything is yellow here. That means that everything like when it's yellow, that's where everything's going to emit from. This is what our foam is. And when it's red, that's our transparent. So now we have to just come down to hot 4D and um, oh yeah, there's one more thing we have to do right here where it says do I think it's Jacobian, Jacobian, I don't know, but you want to make sure you click that on. So now if I click play, we'll start to have our vertex maps generate. And from here, we can play with the Jacob threshold and the foam threshold to kind of get it on the crests how we want. So if I, dra if I drag the Jacob threshold down, we're getting more foam on here. And if I drag it up, it's going to lessen. So you want to kind of hit that sweet spot for you. And I kind of want to just have it off the top of the crest of the waves. So I'm just going to play with these attributes until I get it in a good spot, which I think, I think that's looking pretty good. So it's hitting at the top of the waves here. So my settings right now is for Jacob threshold 0.55 and my foam threshold 0.11. So now this is our foam that our vertex map is making for us. So one trick, if you're using Redshift, and let me come up to my render settings, change this down to Redshift, and I'm just going to click off first, enable, leave everything else the same for the display purposes. And so if I want to have a foam map look exactly like this on a Redshift material, if I come down to create, Redshift material. Now just make a new material here. Give this a second to kick in to start in Redshift. There we go. So now I'm going to um, open the edit shader graph. And then here I'm going to go into materials, come over to material blend. And then I'm going to put this on my surface and take my original material, pipe this into my base clear, my base, um, my base color. And then I'm just going to make this like an ocean blue. Somewhere around there like that. So that's going to be my base color. And now I'm going to add another material. And this is going to be my foam color. So I'm just going to make this white. And remember, this is just for tutorial purposes. You could do anything you want in here. So my foam is going to be white. And then the trick here is... If I come over to where it says find nodes and I type in vertex, I can actually use the Cinema 4D vertex map in here as a mask. I don't know if it's going to make it a mask, but yeah, yeah, it's going to be a mask. So if I click on this and then on my right hand side, you see vertex map. So I want to drag in my foam vertex map into here. And then from here on my output, come over to my layer one and make it a blend color. Now this is going to change this to white, which is fine. That's not what it's going to look like once we apply our material. So now if I drag my material onto my plane and I, um, I click back on model to bring our ocean back in. So if I come back to render view, click play, 
click bucket and let me click play on my timeline actually let me stop my viewport here let this play out a little bit like so now if I click play on here you can see we now have film maps in redshift on all of our crest here which is cool if that's all you want to do for there that's how you do that but for this part now I'm going to show you how to do X particles and how to have those emit off the top but I figured I'd just share that with you guys as a bonus if you use a redshift that's how you're able to apply that so now let's get into the X particles so I'm going to start by making the XP system I'm going to click on my XP emitter come over to my object and then under my um, emitter shape click on object then I'm going to drag my plane into my object and under selection I'm going to drag my foam vertex map so now let me zoom in a little bit if I click play now we're getting um, particles emitting from the vertex map but to be able to see this a little bit better, let me click on display. I'm gonna come down and make this a dot, make the dot color white. I'm a particle color white. Click play again. And now we can see our dots are emitting from our vertex maps here, but it's still a little bit hard to tell because there's no gravity, nothing to pull it down. So under my modifiers, I'm gonna come over and just add a gravity. And I'm just gonna vary it like five centimeters just to add a little bit of variance in there not too much now if I click play again now you can see our particles are emitting off the top of the crest here and to be able to see a little bit more let me add a little bit more particles so I'm gonna come over to my emitter go to admissions let's add two more zeros to this so under my birth rate I added two more zeros click play now we can really see our particles are emitting off the top of the waves there. And right now, if I look at my other view, so like look at the front view, there's all these wasted particles down here. And that's gonna slow down our playback. It's gonna slow down the render a little bit because our particles are going on forever. And there's a lot of particles there. So to combat that and uh, make this scene a little bit more efficient, we wanna come under modifiers and go under controlled modifiers and come down to XP kill. And you'll come up with this box here. And under our attributes, we wanna leave everything the same. So where it says volume, anything that goes outside bounds means that it's gonna die. It's gonna kill off that particle. So I wanna drag my box right underneath my ocean here. So anything that goes past this box is gonna die. And that should speed up our playback and the render. So now when I hit play, anything that comes outside these boundaries are automatically going to die. Another trick too that I did, I'll come back to my perspective. So if I go back to my emitter and I come under my um, lifespan, if I only make this like one or two frames, that's going to give us a little bit better mist because each frame is going to have a new particle generate. So let's maybe just do two with a variance of one. And actually for my speed under particle, basic particle data, I'm going to bring this down to zero because everything's going to be generated from our gravity. So all of our movements generated by our gravity. Now everything's pulling down and we have our nice rolling particles off the crest of our waves there. So that's about it. That's that trick there. And so now if you want to render this out using redshift which i use if you come under xp emitter and you place a redshift tag on there so i'm gonna come under redshift tags make an object tag and under particles this will only happen if you put a redshift tag on a particle emitter but under particles you can come under point instance and now if i come up to my render view click play we have all of our particles here. Like, let me delete this so you guys can see. So if I didn't have that, this is what's gonna happen. You don't see any of the particles at all. But if you have the redshift tag on there, now we see all of our particles. And if you wanna control the sizing under here where it says scale multiplier, just bring that down like 0 0.2, 0 0.1. 
and there you go. And the color of your particles are gonna be based off of your display here. So under display, particle display, my particle color is white, but whatever you have on there, that's what color your particles are gonna be. Another trick too is, since I don't have motion blur on here, I like to do motion blur in post. What I could do is render out these particles separate. So we're gonna go over to our um, object ID on our tag, go to override, make this one and then we want to come over to let me go into redshift and aov manager i'm just going to add a puzzle mat and then their puzzle mat instead of material id i'm going to do object id and make this one like so so now if i go into here under my beauty pass click on puzzle mat now I have all my particles render out in its own pass. And that way in After Effects, I can apply like real smart motion blur or whatever kind of blur you want to add to it to kind of make it look a little bit more like ocean spray or white water. And so, um, yeah, that's basically the rundown on how to get that to work there. So that's all I can show you now is Cinema 40 and X Particles. So I just opened up my original file that I was working with which is the file that you guys saw on Instagram and Facebook, etc. And this has everything cached into the scene. And so if I hit render, you can see I also added um, a HDR light as well. So I have a dome light in here with the HDR in it, which I get all my HDRs for free online. I just go to hdrhaven.com. Um, but this is what my water looks like whenever I was doing my original setup and so um yeah if you guys just want to see my shader and how i worked everything out i'll actually put this for free up on gumroad um yeah i'll include the hdr map since those are free online anyway so yeah play around with the file if you guys have any questions always hit me up on <clears throat> on instagram or youtube or facebook and thank you guys again for reaching out i know a lot of you guys want to see how to do this and so hopefully this helped you guys out Definitely tag me on your post if you guys make your own scenes with this. I love seeing what you guys come up with. And um, until next time, keep creating. Thanks again for all the support. I appreciate it.